Expositions by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Psalms 16, 63 Psalm 16, 1 Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. Ah, brothers and sisters! When we think of our daily dangers and when we remember the sinfulness of our nature, this petition may well be our frequent prayer. Preserve me, O God. And this may well be our plea, as well as the psalmists, for in you I put my trust. We trust in the name of the Lord, for we can never expect to be preserved except by his protecting grace. 2, 3. O my soul, you have said unto the Lord, You are my Lord, my goodness is nothing apart from you, as for the saints that are in the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. My God, I would gladly prove my gratitude to you if I could, but what can I do for one so great as you are? You are infinitely above me. You need nothing from my hands. What, then, can I do to show my love to you? By my care for your people I may prove what I would do for you if I could. Are they hungry? I will feed them. Are they sick? I will visit them. If my goodness cannot reach the great head of the church, it shall at least wash the feet, for I do love you. O oh my God, and I want, in some practical way, to show that I love you. 4. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God, their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. He who sincerely loves the true God cannot have any regard for his rivals. He will have no communion with false gods in any shape or form. 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. That is the believer's portion, his God. The Levites, as a tribe, had no inheritance in the land of Canaan, but God was their portion, and who shall dare to say that they had not the best of it? Now, child of God, if you could have your choice, what would you choose, goods or God? earthly wealth, or the God who is the source of all good things. 5. You maintain my lot. One of our great men has for his motto, I will maintain it. But the psalmist's is a much better one, you maintain my lot. It is better to have God for our guardian than to have all possible human strength with which to defend ourselves. 6. The lions are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yes, I have a goodly heritage. The Jewish rulers stretched the measuring or dividing lines over the plots of land that fell to the different members of the family. But here the man of God declares that since God was his portion, the lions had fallen to him in pleasant places. There is no choice of places, or times or circumstances with the man who thoroughly loves his God. He can find God in loneliness and so enjoyed the best company. If he has God in poverty, he has great riches. O oh, happy man who has God to be his all! 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel he has talked with me, checked me, rebuked me, instructed me encouraged me. I will bless Jehovah, who has given me counsel. That does not, at first sight, look as if it were one of the choicest of blessings, yet the psalmist mentions it immediately after he has declared that the lions have fallen on him in pleasant places, as if he felt that one of the choicest blessings of the covenant was that God had been his counselor. 7. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. God makes my heart, my conscience, my inmost being to give me instruction. What a blessing that must have been to David. 
A man who has no inward monitor because he has stifled his conscience so that it no longer holds him by the ear, and speaks with him, is poor, indeed. But blessed is he who has his God and his conscience to counsel and instruct him. 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Brother, have you always acted on the straight? Have you so conducted your business that you need not be ashamed of God himself to look at it? Then do not be afraid of anything that may happen to you, for you will come out all right at the last. There may be great trouble in store for you and you may be stripped of all that you possess, but you shall never be ashamed. 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices, my flesh also shall rest in hope. Every good thing belongs to the man who belongs to God. He need not be afraid even of the grave, for he can adopt the language which is here prophetically used for Christ, himself. He is not afraid to die, for he can say. 10 for you will not leave my soul in Sheol. The place of the departed, the intermediate state into which the soul passes at death. 10. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. In the fullest sense, this verse belongs to Christ, alone, but, still, what belongs to the head is also the portion of the members of his mystical body. 11. You will show me the path of life, in your presence is fullness of joy, at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And this is the portion of every believer. Here little, but hereafter much, says Bunyan, but I will venture to alter it, and say, here much, but hereafter more shall be our inheritance from age to age. Psalm 63, 1. O God, you are my God, early will I seek you. Because you are mine, therefore will I seek you. A sense of possession makes us long for the enjoyment of all that is really ours. 1. My soul thirsts for you my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land, where no water is nothing but you can content me. Everything else, or everyone else falls short of my desire. There is no water that can slake such a thirst as mine unless I drink from you, you overflowing well. 2. To see your power and your glory, so as I have seen you in the sanctuary. Past enjoyment of our Lord's presence inspires us with earnest desire for fresh manifestations of His face. If we have ever seen God's power and glory when we have come into the courts of His house, we long to see them again, whether we are in the wilderness or in the sanctuary. 3. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Is not that word loving kindness one of the noblest terms in our own or in any other language? The word, kin, is at the root of kind and kindred, so that loving kindness, or loving kindness, is such conduct as we may expect from those who are akin to us. God's Kindness to Us Through Jesus Christ, His Son and our Saviour brings to us a loving kindness that is better than life, and for which our lips can never praise him enough. 4. Thus will bless you while alive, I will lift up my hands in your name. For very joy, I will lift them up, and clap them before you. Though, before, they hung down as though I were dispirited and could never work again, yet now. I will lift up my hands in your name. 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. God's flowers always bloom double. 
God's blessings are like marrow and fatness, there is in them a double satisfaction of the most intense kind. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. 5. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. The psalmist speaks as if each of his lips had a separate joy and as though, together, they would express the double joy for the double satisfaction which his God had given to him. 6. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches. Apostrophe even then shall I have joy, for your presence makes even the darkness to be light. 7. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. If I cannot get into the light of your countenance, the very shadow of your wings shall make me glad. Only let me be near you, that is all I crave. 7. My soul follows hard after you. I am like a dog who loves to keep close to his master's heels. 8. 11. Your right hand upholds me. But those that seek my soul, to destroy it, shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes, but the king shall rejoice in God, everyone that swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Stopped with a shovel full of earth, in many cases, for it seems as if some liars would never cease lying as long as they are alive.